Time to test out some keel cook I got from Danny Collins. He treated keel cook. I'm going to get this on video. I'm going to reduce it down to a biface. I'm going to save the flakes and probably sell the biface. Yeah. So far it looked pretty good. Just that one flake I took off, but I want to do the rest of it. It's got some inclusions in it, but it pretty much looks clean to me. Okay, now, the way I'm going to do this is try to get nice flakes. So, I don't know how we spall this. Interesting to try to understand how these things are spalled. That must have been a big chunk of Keokuk to start with. Yeah, this is the kind of flake I'm looking for. Should be able to get quite a few of these. Yeah, it looks sweet. Okay. I could try to zoom out a little bit. Let's see. Okay. Why do I hold it this way? It's just the way I get used to it. <clears throat> I don't like putting it on a leg pad. Yeah, so I just nap everything freehand. <clears throat> did have a crack right there. Very nice. I mean, it's a little bit narrow, but it's got to be very clear to get that kind of a flake. Oh, yes. That's, it does have some issues that are typical with keel cook. It does not look bad. We'll see. Very nice. And you cannot have those flakes. Nope. I'm not going to be selling flakes for quite a while. Unless it's for flint and steel kits. Yeah. It's nice and clear. I have a link to Danny Collins uh, website in the uh, comment section. Under rock sellers. The comment that I put in there with rock sellers. Yeah. Sweetness. Why am I careless with the the flakes? They're not going to break. This is only like 8 inches drop right there. I'm pretty close to the floor. Now, if I was sitting up really high off the floor, yeah, it might be too much of a drop to throw those down. Especially when they fall on top of other flakes. Okay. Think about by facing it. I can't just re remove flakes in one direction. Well, it'd be nice. I would like to just go in one direction. It was easy that way. Let me see. Let me think. That didn't work.
I already got the low hanging fruit, so to speak. The ones that are easy to make long flakes from. Hit those areas that are easy to flake. Yeah. Already done most of that. Now I've got to go around and chip, chip away at the edge. This edge looks like it might have a bunch of cracks in it, so I need to get rid of that first. Everything else looks nice and clear. Yeah. All right. I don't think too much about it because it'll take me forever if I start thinking about it. So although there is a little bit of a strategy going on, it's not much. There's not much thinking going on. It's just whatever seems to look good. After years of practice, in, in an expedient kind of way, And I could hit a flake off this area. This is a good platform here. I could strike that way. I'm going to save that for later. That's easy peasy. This, this over here is hard. I want to do the worst first. I don't know what's going to happen on this edge. See, these are going to be a little bit more curved because it's you know it's it's a big lump right there. You can already see the biface forming. Right, right. Hopefully, you can see the biface starting to emerge. Nice. Look how clear that is. That's amazing. I've never had a piece this big, this clear. Even with the cracks on this edge. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing this a while. I've been flitting that big for a while. I've never had a piece of keel cooked this big and this clear. It usually has cracks or inclusions or some weirdness to it. See, usually it's kind of crackly like this side, but that crackly part is going to go away here in a minute. Yeah, I'm slowly just pecking away at it. And when I see an opportunity for a good flake, I'll take it. No, it's not that divey. It's not as divey as that Danish flint. But it does, the terminations are a little bit unpredictable. Yeah, 
lot of inward force will scoop it. Yeah. It could be the way I'm holding it too. That it didn't go all the way, or it didn't go further. I could start it, restrike it. But I'm I'm thinking it'll overshoot if I do that. It'll it'll tend to dive inward. If I I can rehit that, see how it, it's still intact. I can rehit that, and it'll. But I don't want to take a chance of the overshot. Yeah. Let's see. All right, I gotta start being more careful. Not quite far enough. Yeah, I mean, it, when the first part of it breaks, it indicates a lot of a lot of initial force when the first segment breaks off. But I needed a lot of a lot of initial force to make a long flake. Now there's a crack here. See that? So let's explore where that goes. But first, I gotta I'm gonna thin down the the end here. It's always good to thin the ends down first. whenever possible and in the process get some nice flakes before I creep in on that crack it doesn't seem to go all the way through it looks a little bit healed right there yeah don't often do this picking on the edge, but it, I need to clean it up a little bit. You know, keep just pick around the edge. But in this case, it's getting kind of wonky. Crack is right there. It might not be very much of a crack. That flake broke all up. That's not good.
I think the crack is not to be worried about anymore.
Okay, I see some spots where I could hit it, but I'm not going to. I'll just back off and leave it like this and offer this in the auction. I got lots of flakes down here. Oh, yes. I think that'll fit in a small flat rate box. Yeah. As long as it's not more than eight and a half inches. Let's see. Yeah, I have to be careful with this one because it could snap in half. Yeah, seven and a half. It, it should fit in a small flat rate box along with the other brooks and bite bases. Okay. I think that's the only video I'm going to do for today because I got a lot of work to do. I'm, I'm going to have to end up doing all my auction stuff today at the last minute and then tomorrow morning. Yeah. Dang it. I was not as productive yesterday as I thought I was going to be. Yeah. All right. I took one too many long breaks. See, Keel Cook usually has this kind of stuff in it. See that? Usually has that. That's what I've been encountering with most of mine that I've gotten in the past. Yeah, but this stuff is... Get rid of that stuff and it's nice. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh yeah, very controllable, yeah, predictable. It's good to be predictable as far as stone goes. The more predictable, the better. Yep. When there's a crack, you don't know what's going to happen. But other than that, it looks pretty good. I don't know what's going on there. Too much force means too much crackling. Probably. There's too much crackling going on on this side. be able to use that yeah okay so like, I'm gonna save all these good flakes there's a there's a bunch where's my bin got a bunch of these bins yeah I'm gonna get this on video just give you an idea what I save I save anything that can be utilized Easily, some of the chunks I don't like dealing with. If it's too curved or too triangular like this, I don't save those. Too narrow and triangular is just too much effort. Yeah, the time involved in making that, those into arrowheads is not worth it. These things, I can make a little arrowhead, but it's just too much time involved. Same with these. These usually are not that great. But I'll save this one anyway. Because you can't have any. Nope. I need all of these. This is what I want. Yeah. Okay, I'll finish sorting these. Or looking through these off camera. All right, there you go. That's it.